We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star events. Welcome to Rubem, coming up on tonight's show. We head in the sheds with James Webster and Featherstone Rovers as they host Swinton Lions. Darcy Lussick and Blake Wallace bring you Toronto Wolfpack K2 teammates. You have the chance to win courtesy of Bachelors Peas and the Rugby League All-Stars. And we're joined, Jonesy, tonight in the <laughs> studio by two legends of South Sydney Orbitals and now Wigan Warriors as well, George Burgess. And the legend himself, Henderson Gill, King of Boogie. Mr. Humility. <laughs> King of Boogie, yeah. King of Boogie. One of those most memorable, iconic moments of my growing up, obviously, uh, watching players. And when I got my heritage number at the um, the Great Britain Lions Lunch, Lions Lunch tours there, I remember you saying, go on, Jonesy, and getting the <laughs> biggest buzz ever. It's the biggest thing I remember, so thanks for coming on the show tonight. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. You know, it's, like I've always said, it's, it's great to be remembered. George, are you, are you glad you're home? Are you, are you happy to be home, pal? I am, Simo, yeah. It's great to be back in uh, the north of England and, and the sunny weather. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it, you know. Uh, no budgets I, anymore, mate. <laughs> no, no, it's, um, you know, it's, a, it's a great change for me. I, you know, you can get caught up in that Sydney bubble sometimes. And for me now, having a, a young family and three young kids, and uh, it's, it was a, it's perfect timing for me coming back to my roots and, um, and showing my wife where, where I'm from. Mate, I was back at the Moor this weekend. My eldest lad played against Dewsbury yeah. Moor, your old club. Yeah. Your kids, any of them going to play rugby any time down the line, do you reckon? Well, yeah, if, it, if it, you've seen him running on the pitch after the game yesterday, <laughs> you, you'll, uh, you know that he's pretty keen to get out there on the pitch. He, he was ripping his, uh, his jumper off, so he had, showing everyone his shirt. So, yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> yeah, he tackles his sisters all the time, so he's, he's, uh, he's getting ready. You've gone from a Sydney bubble to a Wigan bubble. Now, Henderson, you were talking about the Wigan bubble, about not being able to you go back to your car and you're surrounded. Tell us about the Wigan bubble in your era. <laughs> well, it was it was pretty much as it still is today for the players. You know, those Wigan fans are really loyal. They always have been. I used to come back to my car, and my car's surrounded by the fans. And it was great because it's nice, because I've always said, you've got to put something into the game. Those supporters are the ones that pay your wages and look after you, so you've got to make time for them. So you've got to do that. Do you have it's, a boogie with them? Yeah. Well, yeah, I've had a bit of a boogie with them. You know, I used to do the famous salute and everything with them as well. And they, yeah, they got, yeah, they got photographs of that as well. It was really great, and I, and I loved it, but it's high maintenance over there. Yeah. <laughs> what about the 1985 game? Because we had Peter Sterling sitting right where you were a few weeks ago, and he said, I wish it had been a, 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 it played worse and lost uh, and won, sorry, because they were on the wrong end that day. But you had a great game, and was that one of your best games ever to play in your career? Every player's dream is to play at Wembley. You know, it's the biggest stage, and to score at Wembley is another step up again. Um, I've scored, actually, I've scored better tries than the one I scored at Wembley, but that one will be remembered because I think it was the smile. What it was was a smile. But um, I always remember it because I knew when I got that ball, I were off. And I saw Gary Kemble coming across and I thought, hey, up, what's he going to do? <laughs> and I give him a little stutter. He fell for it. I said, see you later. <laughs> All the best. Yeah, that was it. And that's what it was. You know, I got him in two minds. Yeah. You get a fullback in two minds, you've got him. And the main thing was, as I came out the tunnel, you know, 100,000 crowd, I saw my parents first, oh, you know, all wow. my family. Must in the, so in the, well, they stuck out like sore thumbs in, <laughs> you know, in cherry and white. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, and, you know, so, you know, from crouch down, I was like, my chest was swollen and that was it. And I started strutting. Talk me through some of those days. What did you do? Give us an insight in what yeah, that preparation break your, looked like. Break your days down. Well, my insight, I spent more time with my headphones and music on right, more than anything oh, else. What were you listening to? Yeah, what were you listening to? Right, all, <laughs> oh, the reggae music. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's today, today's terms, bashment. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, and that was me, you know, and I would rather just sit, relax, 
listen to music. Um, I wasn't one of these in bed for eight o'clock, nine o'clock. That was Sean Edwards. And on the day of the game, I'd get up in the morning, we'd do a session and things like that. And I'd be back with the music again and just relax and put my feet up and just relax. I really, really <laughs> lethargic. Just relaxing. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, that was the key. Back. That was the key because my policy was you train too hard. Yeah. When it comes to the game, you haven't got that little 5% extra to put in. Wow. I did just enough, to, enough. And then I always had a little bit left in reserve. I wish I'd have met you 20 years ago. <laughs> it. George talking about being happy there, the fans, the players and stuff. Top of the league at the minute, as we uh, currently film. Everybody yeah. in good spirits over at Wigan. Yeah, obviously um, it, was a, it was a messy win on, on yesterday, but it was, uh, it was good uh, to, to get the two points nevertheless and, and stay at the top. Obviously it's early days in the season, but... To, to be talking about where we are in the ladder, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's always nice to keep winning and, and uh, yeah, the, the camp's pretty, pretty happy. Georgie, you mentioned obviously Henderson there with this bubble. Have you had yet a pie in balm? Yeah. We'll have one tomorrow. Mate, you need to do it, report on us. Do I'll be, I'll be in Wigan Town tomorrow, so I'll, uh, <laughs> be, I'll find the best pie shop. It'll <laughs> be, be, be pie and peas when I were there, you yeah. know, pie and peas, that <laughs> yeah. would it, and Lancashire hot pot. Yeah. You know, that, that was the main thing, yeah. right? And it were nice. Well, that's why they used to call us the pie eaters, didn't they? Yeah. You know, back in the day, Wigan, we were the pie eaters. And it's, it still sticks, but like I said, um, you know, when I used to go up, I got to the training ground when they was training up at Oral before you came over. They used to train at Oral, they had that facility there. Mm. And I've gone up there and I've seen the meals and everything that's prepared. Unbelievable. I, I was impressed, to be fair. With How did it compare to Souths? Well, yeah, we, I never had a, sh a chef um, at the club. So the, we're going to have got a, their own chef. He's, uh, he's the most liked man in the club, I think, by the lads, because he keeps them well fed. But on a professional note, how, how big is the spotlight on what you're eating? Is he sort of monitoring that as well? From a, yeah, from a performance yeah, no, he's, it's, all, it's all really healthy. Um, yeah. But you know, mm. it's, but is it individual, bespoke? Do you all get the same thing? Or? If, if someone has a request, yeah, he, yeah. he will adhere to that. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a lot of the lads are doing vegan and stuff in the pre-season, so... He changed it. Shout him out, call him out. <laughs> call him out, call him out. <laughs> well, yeah, <so. laughs> yeah. No, but, um, yeah, a few, few of us have gone different diets, carnivore diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm on that. Uh, Benny Flower was giving that a go. Let's go over now uh, to Toronto to check out teammates, K2's teammates with two of the best. Check this out. Darcy Lussick, and I don't have a nickname. AKA 39 seconds. <laughs> yeah, okay, run with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> uh, Blake Wallace at the Mav. Boring. Funny sometimes, maybe. Um, Intense. Intense. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> no, oh, yeah. you. <laughs> Probably energetic. Out there. Ruthless. <laughs> oh, yeah. I came for came sure. I came for sure. For sure. Untidy, yeah. just messy. Nah, couldn't do it. Nah. Don't they're, 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 oh, for sure. <laughs> we'll go dresses for like that. 35 to 40 year old, like stylish hipster men club vibe. Well, he is about 30, what is he? Well, he is, yeah, but that's, that's, the, that's the vibe he goes for. Yeah, uh, awful. A hair transplant. Tom Oberson. <laughs> yeah, I'll be for sure. He just needs to shave it. He just needs to accept the fact that it's gone and. Yeah. Uh, or Gaz O'Brien as well. Oh, yeah. Gary Wheeler, I reckon. There you go. I just feel like he'd be able to get himself out of many situations. Yeah. Probably Ackers. Yeah, yeah. You just don't open them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get out of Worthy. <laughs> Probably Greg Worthington, aka Eddie Hearn. <laughs> he's got a he's got a one and zero record. <laughs> Justin Hodges is still sleeping somewhere in Australia. So. 
Gaz O'Brien. If you tell him something, he dobs you in any day of the week. <laughs> Throws you straight under the bus and then reverses back over. <laughs> I'd probably put my hand up there as well. I, I hate coffee, so it needs to be good for me to have it. Dicko. Dicko, yeah. Counts Dicko. his calories. And yeah, yeah everything, everything's precise with Dicko. Yeah. Good on him. Well, it depends which way you look at it, but mm. I reckon if you if you ask one of the English boys, they'll probably say Josh McCrane because he likes country, but there's nothing wrong with a bit of country, so I can't so really... you and Josh McCrane. Probably me and Josh McCrane. <laughs> Hakeem Maludi. Yeah. Just, you just, you're not getting off that island. No. Scruffy is Tommy Alberson. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's got a he's got BMW, but it's just it's, it's been a, yeah, it's been a, it's been around the it's been around the, you know <laughs> the traps. Darcy Lussick there and uh, Blake Wallace. Now you played him the other night. Yeah. 66, 50 points plus on him. I didn't expect that to be fair. Yeah. I think the boys attacked really well, defended well as well. Just playing with a smile on the face. And, and again, I, I go back to this idea of a bit of flair. The amount of people that have come up to me talking uh, about Luke Gale's little flicker on the back. Oh, know, from, a, from a coaching point of view, you're thinking, just, just draw and pass it. You know, take easy option, yeah. giving it all this round. But it, it is entertaining for fans to see. You'll know more than anybody. Yeah, Andy Gregory was unbelievable. Yeah. You know, you get Andy Gregory on his day, he's unplayable. Yeah. You know, um, I always remember on the 88 tour when we beat Australia, that third test, him and Kevin Ward. Right. They had this little move called a ward here. Andy Gregory went round. Kevin Ward, you know, it was a big prop, heavy duty, top notch. <laughs> went in there, <laughs> banged him there, little flick around Andy Gregory, and that was it. Next minute, we scored a try. What about, talk to us about the tour, because it, that 88 tour, and, and tours in general, yeah. uh, is that the best time of your life when you're on tour with the boys? Well, I, I really enjoyed that tour because I was disappointed because I missed out on the 84 tour. You know, you know, being a naughty boy, you know, <laughs> you know, with with the coach Frank Myler, you know, because what it was actually tell us the truth. I'll, yeah, all right, <laughs> <laughs> what it is, Frank Myler used to always give me an Ellery Hanley stick. Yeah, yeah, tell us we were overrated. What? You know, so <laughs> I didn't like that, you know. So Wiggins played Oldham, and he was coaching Oldham, right? And we're getting a bit of stick down there playing there. So I've actually gone now. And I've scored a try, right? So I've gone right under the dugout and put a finger up. <laughs> <laughs> but it completely slipped my mind that he's the tour manager. <laughs> <laughs> and it cost me my 84 tour. Yeah. Um, you know, I was really annoyed about it. It did hurt me, but I felt it was warranted what I did yeah. uh, at the time. And, you know, I've never forgot it ever since, and I never will. You know, it cost me a tour, my behaviour, but that's life, you know? George, just um, listening to Anderson talk about some of the players that he played with, the talented one, Andy Gregory there. NRL's full of the most talented players on the planet. I know the way that they play the game, they try to keep the errors pretty low and, and play out the sets, but who's the most skillful player, most entertaining player you've come across in an NRL? Yeah, I'd say Greg English, a uh, player that I played with, the, the, the things that he could do with the ball and, and, yeah. and his footwork and his fend, uh, pretty unlike any other player. So he, he, was, he was someone you... You, you were pretty happy about having in your team, and then uh, I, I suppose playing against Jason Jason Tamalolo, he's yes. big big man and uh, footwork, and and it, he's just the things that he can do on a pitch is pretty unbelievable. Some were telling us that you was the king man, the king dingling in the gym as well. Yeah. When we went, I was blown away by the science and the technology that's in there. You've all got little computers, yeah. you know exactly what you need to lift, and you type in your scores. Yeah. Was that one of your big motivators to sort of rule that gym? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, they put up the the boards and you know the the gym records and you've got the records ever at South N nearly all of them according to Sammy yeah you have to, you have, you have to uh, r records are there to be broken out <laughs> <laughs> you'd love that Anderson wouldn't you you'd love that man <laughs> right, right, top of that leaderboard oh uh, you know, I never used to do no gym work in my life. I he breaks his records on the pitch <laughs> <laughs> never used to do that. I used to watch the lads go in the gym at Wigan and 
work out, but I, I just would never do it. Just want my thing. We're going to go now into the end of the part, or more in part two, right here on Free Sports. But enjoy this. It's uh, James Webster, Featherstone in the sheds. <laughs> Right off, right? Who we got? Get Coops on for Holroyd. Let's go, tighten up, tighten up, last one. Yeah, let's go. Wagatoris here. I've got my flat cap on. I'm at the LD Nutrition Stadium for our In The Sheds feature with Featherstone Rovers, Australian head coach, James Webster. They come up against Swinton Lions. Want to give you a real insight into his coaching style. Not only pre-match his team talk, his goals, he sets his team, but during the game, the emotion, what it's like coaching his team. And half time, how he revs the guys up, and then at full time, his reaction. We're gonna really get behind the scenes and check out James Webster. Okay, shit, get this quick, get this real quick. Um, if we dip our toe in here today, okay, we're gonna, <coughs> we're gonna find this tough, really tough. I've got a lot of respect for them as a team, okay, physically especially, they're gonna come here and make this absolutely awful for us, okay? It's how we start the game, which will dictate uh, what type of team we're gonna be today, okay? Everyone got a good understanding of that, okay? Make your first tackle and your first carry the best one. <coughs> Okay, we've worked hard all pre-season trying to become a side that can back up a win with another win. Okay, in a good trademarking game where all you have to do is your job. Okay, that's all I've got for you. All the game plan stuff you should know. Okay, be ready to play with the ball as always. We like to use the ball, but just do your job and do it well and do it absolutely ruthlessly all the time. Discipline with and without the ball today is massive for us. With and without it, you know that fair cup is going to be trying to get hands in, he's going to be up the ref the whole time, all game. Discipline with him without the ball, that's us all day. Brett Ferris in the background, loads of experience in Super League. He only needs one more try for a career 100. Will he get it today? Yeah, let's go, tighten up, tighten up. Four to do. Plenty of players, you've got Tom Allroyd, uh, you've got Sutcliffe coming down from the Leeds Rhinos. Ben Blackmore, you can finish your try. Tom, just go hard, yeah? Go hard, and then I'll just bring you off, won't it? We'll just be having a little bit of time, just, just getting in there, just thinking about what their plan of attack is today. Last one, sorry. Last one, last one. Good snow. Yeah, get a touch. March has got the team out. He's had he's had the backs out first. He's had the backs out first, doing some hands hands drill into some kicking. You're looking you're looking at Craig Hall today. He only needs he only needs nine points for a career at 1500. There's some good milestones. The boys look at the camaraderie. They're just getting prepped. The little high fives, just getting amongst it. Yeah, let's go, big well. Sorry, Ollie. Yes, mate. Yeah. On the yellow. Yeah, let's go. Go on, squeeze, squeeze! Yeah, let's go! Stay close to the air, stay close to everything.
Right, get a rocket up. And if they want to just be really lax and let these guys onto your trial line, they're going to score all day, okay? That big number 10's coming on across every time. Okay, deal with it. 12 nil, wow. Are we serious or what? Honestly, are we serious? Like, just haven't turned up here at all, have they? Mate, we've had the ball, right, for three and a half sets in this first 12 minutes. We kicked the ball dead and dropped it twice. And kicked the ball out off the kickoff. Finish it, cheers. Finish it. A forward pass. Was it? message for us is here is that was a really good set you know moving the ball a little bit right now the challenge for us is two okay one is finishing sets okay that's the first and the second one is they're dropping all the time aren't they and we're not winning enough rucks and our line speed our retreat is really poor and they're rolling us down the pitch speak to our middles please speak to our middles all of them way too slow with all our movements way too slow Get out, Blackie. Get out, Blackie. Go on, Blackie. Go on, Holly. Go on, Holly. Go on, Holly. Go on, Holly. Give it to him. Welly, welly for Ira. Right, the message here is complete. Complete and make them come off their own line. Okay, that's what we need to do, okay? Stop thinking we have to score off every set. We haven't given them any type of hard stuff in this game. We've just made it really easy for them. I don't think I even really need to say too much. I think you're gonna, you're gonna tell me the answers here pretty easily. What are we, what are we doing well? What are we doing? What are we doing poorly? Hey, we haven't respected these blokes at all, have we? I've no, I haven't seen it. Four. We got to a kick four times in a whole half. That's not even 20% completions. I've never seen that in a game of rugby league. Okay, I reckon we're under 20% completions at the moment. Okay, now if you flip that the other way around, that's a good note in that once we fix that up, we're going to give ourselves a chance, aren't we? Okay, respect it, please. Get to an edge early with the ball, get to an edge early, okay, and that opens up our big four short side, which Louis, we've done well. A couple of times we had a chance for you on the left. Every time we got the ball early to Greg and to Suddy, we've made really big meters, really big meters. It doesn't matter. Anything else I say to you doesn't matter because if you don't make these guys work hard, you're going to have to find a massive effort to win this game. A massive effort. Okay? You can make it a lot easier for yourselves. Turn the ball over on their try line and defend like hell. Okay? Complete high and defend like hell. You know, I've never really cared too much about completions. Okay? We want to play as much as we can. But today, this second half, we have to do that. Don't feel sorry for yourselves. Okay? Relish the opportunity. This is a big opportunity for us. Go out down here, first up, don't dip your toe in, and start really strong. We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star events. We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star events. Welcome back right here, part two, Rugby AM, here on Free Sports. I'm with Jamie Jones Buchanan, 
the legend Henderson Gill and big Georgie Burgess, two Wigan men and two South Sydney men together on the sofa, Jonesy. I reckon we could have let him lie down on that big sofa just to chill you <laughs> out. Right? Just keep getting rid of that stress. We moved George out a bit. Nice no, pleasure to have you both. Henderson, talk to us. 1985. So you win, you win the Challenge Cup, and then less than a week later. You want to play into South. So how did that move come about? And what did you think when you landed in, in Australia? I think it was Maurice Lindsay come to me and says, oh, we've got an interest from Australia. We want you to go, we want you to fly out straight away. I thought, wow. Uh, didn't know what to do, but I've decided, well, I'll go. Um, got on got on a plane and, and that was it. Met up. And as, as soon as I got off the plane, they had me doing a 10K run. <laughs> Oh. Right, ran all round Australia, right, and I got the, my first photograph outside the Sydney Opera House. Oh, yeah. um, phenomenal, I've still got the picture to this day, it's a beautiful picture outside the Sydney Opera House, but I didn't realise that 10k run. Did they, not, did they not know about your chilling out philosophy, about having a bit more energy for the weekend? He just wanted me to acclimatise quickly, <laughs> and, 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 and that lag. was it, get over the jet lag, and the beauty of it, I'll never ever forget it, because the first three sessions, training sessions that I did at South, the lads had to slow down the training session <laughs> to carry me, right? Yeah. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. You know, I, you know, like I said, they didn't want me to leave nothing in the reserve tanks. <laughs> you know, and, and it, was, it was really hard. You know, I'd never seen any training like that before in my life. I trained hard and it would have doddle over here, but over there, it was something different. Uh, it's half time, uh, as we see in the sheds. Webbo's he's lost his mind in first half. Yeah. The, the completion rate, twenty five percent completion. Right, <laughs> okay, George, George is, How would you feel, George? Twenty five percent completion. I don't know how I feel, but I know a lot of coaches that I've been coached by would uh, probably be ripping doors off. Who be the one? Who be the one who would rip the door clean off? Uh, yeah, match. Match. Michael Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, renowned for his uh, his half time blow ups. What, what was the biggest one you've ever seen? Uh, it's, I don't know, to be honest, it, it's, there were so many. Uh, <laughs> really? I think, yeah, I mean, it was. you, you need a rev up, you need a rev up, don't you, at half time? Uh, and he was good at it, so uh, I can't really recall one. To Did you honest. just know that he was coming, though? Because he, he's quite a short block, quite a low block, and, but he's got some fire. He's got some real fire. Yeah, you'd, yeah, you'd see him come straight into, into the changing rooms and he's, his head would be all, all you know, red and angry, <laughs> so he'd... Uh, you know, he's just put your head down, hopefully don't don't look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Anderson, what about yourself? Obviously, you've, you've been under some great coaches in your time. Do you remember any situations where someone's lost their mind? Um, yeah, I can't remember what game it was, um, but it was live on TV. I think it was a BBC game, and Alex Murphy came into the dressing room and he dressed us all down. That was, the, I think that was the first time ever. Never seen anything like that. I made sure I got out of the way. You know, but he ripped into the whole team. Julian, you're good players when you do it all the time. And I'm having no more doctor's notes neither, and excuses. You train here now from now on. If you don't want to train, go off somewhere else. David, you're going to start training three nights a week. If you don't train three nights a week, you're going on the list. Right? If you're a mile overweight and you're looking for excuses all the time. Right? I'm telling you to your face, I'm not telling you behind your back. You get down here Tuesday, every single one of you. And if you want anybody who wants to do anything about it, you know where my office is, and I accept letters. Got a week to get it right, and a week we're going to get it right. Witness at home, and I want no absentees. Life's got to go on, you know. It doesn't finish right because we've lost two games. It doesn't finish because we had to the Challenge Cup. We've worked hard all season. Be bloody proud about yourself, didn't men. I felt so sorry for David Stevenson as well because he got the brunt of it, <laughs> you know. But uh, that were Murph, you know, he could motivate you. But I'll tell you what, when he blew a fuse, he blew a fuse. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant to see Murph there. And we've got a special competition with Bachelor's Peas. You can win four tickets to the whole derby, Good Friday. Is, is there a big derby in rugby nope, league? Apparently not. Without, without a doubt, all you've got to do is go on rugbym.co.uk, check it out. I've also got another big competition on there with the guys from Rugby League All Stars supporting Robin Mossy with the Rugby League Rumble. George, would you get in the ring and fight for Rob? Would you uh, fancy it? I won't get in the ring, but I'll do it. I'll do what I can to support. 
Have you done much boxing? Are you, are you into it or not? Not bothered. I did get offered to do a boxing fight uh, just recently, uh, but I, I, I turned it down. Remake of Rocky IV. Yeah, right yeah. Ivan Drago. Ivan. Dies, he dies. We've got Club uh, Lang, Club Lang and all in front three. <laughs> oh, I'm too pretty to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go over now back to Post Office Road because it's the Millennium Stadium. Featherstone have had a dressing down at half time. Let's see how they do it second half. Check this out. <laughs> First set, error. Very first set. Good carry, he played it forward there. Oh look, none from one. Big four again. Oh, pass it. Why didn't you pass that? He didn't get a good catch on it. Bus will go himself here for sure. But you guess Bus gets a big show and go. Yeah, told you. Just talk about, talk to Cheers, a really good set, really good set, taking big fours like that. A little bit, give Welly a rap for not offloading the ball like he has, okay. We've just got to complete again and back it up with some good D. Disgraceful. Right. Missed the tackle, didn't put him to ground. That's what happened, okay? You've got to make your one-on-one -on -one tackles. That number 12 is killing us, okay? Talk to him here about, make that sub, kick long, okay, big set. Let's go double change. Let's go Fez in the middle. Fez in the middle for um, uh, Cicino. Whenever you get a chance to do it, Fez in the middle for Cicino. Yes, under the post, under the post, well done. Just give them the same messages. Tell them they've got one sub. Tell them they've got one sub left, okay? All their best middles on at the moment. Keep the ball in play and just complete high. They're gonna give us a chance. If you keep inviting them into good ball, they're gonna, they're gonna be hard to beat. Tough pass for Alex here. That's it, run it, run it. Run it. Okay, de deal with kick off, okay? What short kick off first, okay? Mate, this game's still on, there's still 20 minutes left here. Massive 20 minutes. Watch the short kick off to start with. They're making their last sub now. Inside, inside. Right. Get get Holroyd off, right? Who we got? Get Coops on for Holroyd. Hey, game on here, boys. Got to kick and be squeaky clean for the next ten minutes. I'll take one. Go go, bus. Oh, dropped it again. We dropped it again. Jesus. How many times can we drop a ball? Office Road again. I Check got one in pay. Half time draw and I've won up. Well done, On a personal note, I thought you played really well, but collectively as a team, a lot to work on. Yeah, definitely. I mean, credit to Swinton, you know, they're, they're, good, they're a good side, you know, and they never say die, you know, and uh, 
they made us work for it, but we were scratchy in a lot of ways today, and I think, you know, we could have been could have been a lot, lot better. Greg, four tries, wow, what a game. Yeah, it's uh, nice to get over for a few, I think that's more than I've scored it last two years, so happy with that on a, on a personal note, but collectively, uh, we weren't quite there today, I thought we were Swinton threw some good stuff at us and uh, we gave up far too much ball. We definitely uh, need to look at that this week and, uh, and, and pick his game up if we wanted to move on and, uh, and challenge for that top spot. Yeah, start of the game uh, didn't go to plan in that first half. Completion, penalty area, swint and try. They gave you a good game to be fair. Yeah, it was a tough game. Um, penalties and errors backing them up, you know, they walked us downfield. And uh, when you spend that much time on your goal line, you know, you're going to crack and, and we've got to be better defending his goal line. I didn't think there were much urgency on his, on his own goal line and, and we definitely need to improve there. That's the thing with Swinton. They're, all, you know, they're, a, they're a quality side, and you know, like I said, like I said to you before, they don't say die. And like we, we give them, we give them the chances, and uh, they took them because they've got a quality attack. Jude Frey's try. That must be a try of the season. What a try! Quality as well, yeah, because I was gassed, absolutely <laughs> gassed. And I seen him running upfield, and I was jogging. I was going, Oof, this look at Just go at length. I said, I can't catch you. Out of steam. Out of steam. I was done. Firstly, how's the lungs? First game in a while. Yeah, first game in a month. Back from suspension. Um, they, they were first half. They were a little bit all over the place, but second half got my win back and started to be a little bit sharper. Yeah, frustrating start to the game because Swinton, to be fair, never out of that game. No, exactly. It's, uh, we spoke about not taking them lightly and, and getting out of the blocks quick, but you know we done the complete opposite, and that's why it was such a close game, wasn't it? Yeah, massive. Swinton never gave in to the end. Got the little drop goal, but on a personal note, it must be good to back amongst the boys. Yeah, definitely. It's nothing worse um, having an extended pre-season and, um, and getting flogged. So it's good to be back playing and um, hopefully we build on, on, on that performance because we need to be better next week. Boys. <laughs> oh. Give me your ears, please. Give me your ears. Just start everyone doing your shoes and everything like that. Just for one second. I commend you for getting a win. A win's a win. Uh, and that's what matters at the end of the year, doesn't it? So while we were atrocious in some things we did, we got a win. Okay, so I, I give you full marks for that. Okay, but that's been the chat a couple of times this year, hasn't it? Okay, was we were pretty poor, but we got a win. Um, Learned a couple of lessons today. One couple of things for me is that any team that turns up and completes high and really has a go like they did, mate, they had a right go. Okay, and made you continually have to make tough tackles and put your body on the line. Hey, they're a chance of beating you. Okay, you want to disrespect the ball like we did? Yeah, we're going to make it even tougher for ourselves. See, 27 rounds plus cup plus midweek competition. Okay, you have to find a way. So we have to find a way of being able to turn up every single week with an attitude that we're playing London, Lee, <coughs> Bradford, York, whoever. Not Swinton, think to yourself, oh, we're going to win. They're not going to give it to you. 100% they're not going to give it to you. Cool. I think we learned some lessons from that. Absolutely outstanding stuff uh, from Featherstone Rovers there. Coming back, Greg Worthington will be in the studio. Yeah. Four tries, Jonesy. Are we happy with the performance of the young boys as well? Yeah, and it's it's good. And it's, it's interesting now, now that we've got the reserves back, mm. the drill reg, because you know, in, that, in that reserves, there's a lot of players from other clubs coming into that. When back in my day, it was the bottom end of the first team, so you nearly players and in the top end of your academy come together, play on a Thursday night. We're going to actually doing that because you had Burgess in there. Yeah. Um, Escaray, yeah. Bullock, a lot of regular yeah, yeah. first team players playing reserves. I think they're doing it quite well, aren't they? What, yeah. what do you think to Joe Reg reserves now? Yeah, I think we're going to do a great job uh, yeah. with with their academy system and, and the reserve grade setup that they've got now. And I think it's a pretty easy transition. Mick Cassidy does a great job there, and Daryl Goulding. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, it's always not, not great for them players dropping back to reserve grade, but. You know, I think they they do it really well, yeah, and 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 they've they've been winning winning teams for the last ten years, you know, yeah. Wigan. So I think it works. Anderson, back in your day, what, what how did it work? The the reserves, or it might have been called the Lions. Uh, it was then? called the A team. A team, yeah. Yeah, the A team, and Wigan's always given 
youth a good chance. Yeah. You know, um, back in the days we had like rotation uh, of the squad, and I think some years you were allowed three overseas players, okay. and then the following season it would go to two. And and then back up again. So you know, so so it stopped teams from flooding with overseas players, right? right? And that and that's what it was. And like we used to rely on the A team players as well. Mm. Jones, coming back next week is amateur try of the week. The juniors are back. Bachelors amateur try of the week. And um, basically, if your kids playing any amateur rugby or even if they're a bit older, up to 18s, and uh, they're scoring amazing tries, please send it in. Send it in to the uh, Rugby and Facebook page. It goes out, I think, Sunday night, Monday morning. Yeah, yeah. Get it sent in and you could win an amazing prize of training with your team. Your team could be training with Big George or could be a team of your choice. You could be training with boys and girls. Get them sent in, absolutely outstanding. George, let me talk about a couple of players this year uh, I think have been setting it on fire. Bevan yeah. French, now he's keeping Zach Ardaker at a full-back spot. That's yeah. what I mean. Our best full-back in this, in this league He's now playing centre. Yeah, it's not. How's not that working? Is, is Zach all right? Is he happy? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I wasn't aware of the situation before I came. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's always been Bev at fullback. So, uh, but yeah, Bev's doing a great job, and, and Zach's doing a great job in the centres. And it's not a it's not a bad problem to have really the, the two fullbacks there, and it gives you a bit of um, flexibility. You know, if if you get an injury, you know, they can rotate or stuff like that. Mm. So. It's uh, it's it's not it's not bad. Bev's at fullback for now, and and he's enjoying it there. He's obviously playing some really good rugby, so uh, we'll keep him there whilst he's doing that. So yeah. is, it, is, is that a waste, Zach Ardick? No, you, that's you not play, a waste. You play, you play, you no, no, you know what I'm saying is you played with him. Yep. He's man of steel at fullback. He's best fullback by a mile in comp last year. Gets back into the Great Britain team, um, <coughs> and then obviously he's um, is it at centre yeah. now. Would you say I, I remember 2011 playoffs. He was outstanding. I think he'd just come through and he played centre yeah. for most of them playoffs, and he was he was a great player. He was competitive. And Wigan yeah. teams are renowned for being competitive, and he'll it, slot right in there. Look at Richie Myler at yeah, minute at least. Yeah. He's playing out of his skin, playing yeah. full back. He's yeah. playing nine. He's playing all over. He's chilling out. He's enjoying his rugby league. And sometimes a bit of a change to the right person, by the way, can bring out the best in him. And I think yeah. Zach will be absolutely fine. Another thing I wanted to mention, George, is the women's game because it's going from strength to strength. You've seen it in Australia and the girls' season kicks off once again and unfortunately the first competitive game was the War of the Roses and our girls let us down, Yorkshire going down to Lancashire. And the second game's on right now at Batley, but this Sunday you can get along to Wheatwood in Leeds and check out the third game, but it's, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I'm a massive advocate for women's rugby and... I grew up watching my mum play for Birkenshaw Dragons, and you know they were my first memories of, of rugby league. And was she good? She was, yeah. Big, big rangy, back, back rower, um, making tackles. So yeah, she she was my, my first sort of introduction to uh, to rugby league. So yeah, it's it's great, and 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 the way that it's 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 um, improved in in Australia is is awesome. You know those those women are uh, top, top class athletes. You know and performing in front of massive crowds on TV so uh, you know it's a, it's a great thing to look up to uh, for, for young girls and and I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be encouraging my young girls to uh, get involved. How have you found the Wigan way? Well yeah the Wigan way is very similar to what I've been used to at South Sydney I suppose with you know Michael Maguire and uh, sort of ethos around the club and and uh, that that sort of Melbourne style of of, of training and playing, um, it's very very sort of, uh, as well as the, I, su I suppose the traditional Wigan way of you know, forwards and and I, I, I'm enjoying it. It's it's been great and. Is it as aggressive as people say in training? Yeah, we, I mean we 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 do a lot of that stuff in pre-season you know, with the wrestle and uh, it helps you know, uh, but you you've got to be uh, be careful with some of it and. And uh, it's going to be calculated, but yeah, it definitely yeah. helps around the rook and controlling that rook speed. I, I suppose that's probably one of the, the differences with Super League and NRL is um, the the rook isn't as controlled as well as well as it is in the NRL across the board of the of the teams. I think, and, and I think we're going to have always 
especially this decade, have been a club that do that. Can you still see a remnant of Michael Maguire at Wigan then? We're talking about yeah. discipleship culture, you can still feel it there. Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of the, the coachings that I had with him at South Sydney are still there at, from Wigan, so um, yeah. yeah, definitely. One person who's impressing um, is Jackson Hastings, and he, he's kind of found his feet at Wigan, did a great job at Salford. But he left the NRL and under a lot of media pressure. And have you found life in England a lot easier now because of the lack of media pressure? Because I know you've, you've had it in the uh, in the past when you went Hulk and with the, through the sign through the window screen. Have to bring that up again, <laughs> um, but yeah, nah, it's it's good in a way of the the attention in yeah. the game, but it can also be um, you know bad for some players. But yeah, I think it's nice to get away from it uh, definitely but uh, some players don't react too well to it and, and, and some players love it so it's um, it's just different uh, I mean they build you up to bring you down uh, but yeah that's just the way it is over there. Did you find that Henderson in your career? Yeah um, you've always got to be careful as a player because all it takes a fan can see you out anywhere and once you're in the eye of the public it's easy to pick you up you know so I remember after the game, I'd like to finish my game, go into the bar, you know. What was your drink of choice? Well, I never really drunk it. Right. I was, it was really orange and lemonade and things right. like that. So, Lovely. you know, I, ne I never had that problem. But in my day, you know, when you've got all like 10 crates of beer stacked on coach for the coming <laughs> up, back on the way team when you see all players giving it, <laughs> giving it, that, that's what it was like. Yeah. You know, there's there's a drinking culture. It were a drinking culture and also when, when the... Uh, the trophies were sponsored by the cigarette companies. Yeah, you um, see sleeves of cigs, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, John Player specials and things like that. Regals, you know, we got all that, and then the Stones bitter, you know, filling all the beer on the buses. It was unbelievable. Always, yeah. always give us, give us the top three drinkers of your era you played with. The top three. <laughs> the top three. Well, I'm gonna go with Lee Crooks. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Crooks. Um, Andy Gregg, <laughs> Roy Agatey. Roy Agatey. Roy Agatey from Saints, yeah. They could drink. There's a lot more, believe you me. <laughs> right? And they, they, them boys there could really drink. You know, they really they really could. Um, it was unbelievable. But um, like I said, how Lee Crooks could drink, how he did. And he was a phenomenal trainer. Yeah. Lee, yeah, Lee Crooks, he was a phenomenal trainer. We had uh, Peter Stillen on, and he just said how good a player he was, how, how strong, how tough, how, how how committed he was. As soon as he got on that pitch, yeah. and in training as well, he was yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, he was he was gifted as yeah. a young lad, um, it, and still, you know, you, you know, you could pick certain players, but what a ball handler! Yeah, for the foot forward, you know, he was one of the, he was one of the unique style of players. You know, a, a ball handling prop forward. You know, he, you know, he had phenomenal hands and he had the kicking game to go with it as well. Some big news coming this week, George, and it, and it kind of concerns you in a little way. Uh, ben murdoch Masilla who had, had a pretty good <laughs> game against you, mate. Yeah, no. First round, you, uh, he bumped you on your backside. He's going to the Warriors. Yeah, no, a great player. Uh, very strong runner of the ball. Put me on my, uh, on my bum in the first game. <laughs> wrong foot of me. <laughs> Uh, he always made his net oral contract, 10%. <laughs> no, <Nah. laughs> nah, he's, uh, he's well deserved um, to earn that contract and uh, I'm sure he'll do great things over there. Have you been impressed with the standard of Super League? Cause you've, you've never played Super League before. No. You've come over here from the NRL. Yeah. Um, we, you know, a fantastic career with yourselves and uh, making your debut. Obviously, it was a tough, tough night. You haven't trained much before. You've, you've been carrying a couple of niggling injuries since we're getting mm. over them now. But have you imp are you impressed with the game, stand of the game here? Yeah, definitely. It's it's really high quality game and it's, you know super fast and and it's, uh, it's it's played at a great pace and and you get hit. You know, you, there's some big hits in 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 the Super League and yeah. and uh, yeah, I was def definitely pulling up sore after the, after these games. So I'm I'm enjoying it though. It's uh, it's a great challenge and I'm I'm learning more every week that I play and. And I feel like I'm starting all over again sometimes really? with with, uh, with teams and you know you take for granted over a career how well you get to know certain players and certain teams and for me I feel like yeah it's uh, it's a bit of a you know starting again with with uh, identifying who I'm playing against and I'm mm -hmm. looking through team sheets and I don't know any of the players 
yeah. uh, most of the time, which is, is different, but I'm, I'm enjoying the, the challenge. Jonesy, what a fantastic show tonight, right here, Free Sports. Next week, we've got Dan Sargison. Got that. Yeah, we've the got Sarge. The Sarge is the on Sarge. next week. Uh, thanks for everyone tuning in tonight. It's been a fantastic show. Good night and God bless. We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star event.